Uh, today, uh, we are delighted to welcome uh, Ms. Rumiko Hasegawa, uh, who founded the nonprofit organization uh, Modern uh, Musical in 2016 in Hong Kong after serving as a member of the board of directors of Opera, ha, Opera Hong Kong for several years. In the past, uh, Ms. Hasegawa worked at the FIC. Uh, which stands for fixed income, uh, currency, and commodities at Goldman Sachs, Japan, and uh, Hong Kong, uh, where she became the first Japanese female partner. I had only known Rumiko uh, as the highly assertive uh, head of FIC at Goldman. So I'm eager to witness her uh, other persona apart from being an aggressive investment banker. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's such an honor to, um, to introduce Mother Musical and our journey of redefining opera as a living art. And I am, well, my name is Remiko Hasegawa. I founded Mother Musical. Sure, it's, it's a, quite a career change, indeed. But I see it, uh, I approached um, the opera, uh, founding an opera and then starting opera project like a new business. And then I'd like to share my journey with you this morning. Um, well, I love opera. That's a good start of <laughs> starting this, this project. Um, you know, I... The opera is a human drama um, presented by beautiful singing. It does reveal emotion, like deep emotion, raw emotion, and a layered emotion by beautiful music. And I reflect my life in it. It is a, a very profound art. Then the question comes, why is it dying? Does it, do they look like, oh yeah, that's why I don't go to see opera. <laughs> is, it, is it right? It's, well, you know, too long. I mean, who has hours to, to sit down? Three, four, five hours sometimes with the intermission. But, you know, um, after work, especially, and even weekend, it's very um, unfair to ask, especially young people who know nothing about opera, oh, why don't you come to see opera? You may like it. You know, you, you come in and invest your time to find out. That's too much to ask and uh, too irrelevant. It is, you know, when you think of opera, a lot of people think, oh yeah, those big hair and the long dress and they talk about like 100 years and 200 years or 300 years ago, uh, you know, historical uh, drama. And then, ah, it's nothing to do with me. And then number three, it's too intimidating. You know, when you think about it, if you go, go to the, the, the opera theater and you are sitting, you know, with uh, in a hundreds of others or thousands of others, and uh, oh my God, I'm the only idiot who doesn't know what's happening. They seem to know. And what am I going to wear? So um, it is an intimidating experience to go to, to see an opera. Um, but why are they still prevailing as a problem? So uh, let me tell you a little bit about the background of how opera, uh, why opera was in that form. About 250 years ago, when opera became popular, um, opera was the only entertainment. It's the center of so, a society. Uh, you know, there's nothing else. And we have so many choices now, but those days, opera was it. So, and the aristocrats, they have nothing else to do at night. 
They have to spend three, four hours, you know, like going to opera. They don't really necessarily, they didn't necessarily watch, sit and watch three, four hours. They went out and then, you know, do politics and talk to friends, socializing, and then somebody knocked knock the door. Hey, hey, your best part is coming. So they come down, they came back, and then watch the best scene. It was like that. It was a social scene. Now, 2023, first forward the time, our lifestyle has immensely changed. Im and yet, opera stay the same. I see this gap is killing this art form. So then, if we fill the gap, that's the solution. So our solutions were, number one, we condense the opera. So it's 90 minutes. We make, you know, three, four hours and 90 minutes, and they really focus on the drama. Um, if you watch, if you go to theater, movie theater, it'll be 90 minutes long, usually, or longer these days, and then you don't complain, it's too long, if it's a good movie, right? And then number two, so we actually put that opera story into a present time. So we, we, we adjusted, adapted uh, the time to the current time. And number three, so we don't do at big theater. Uh, we, we perform at a black book theater. It's like a stu big studio and then we don't have an orchestra pit. So you have singers and then, you know, music ensemble just in front of you. Just imagine, like this, like this uh, room, and this opera singers are singing just in front of you. You see, you feel the vibration of the voice. And then, you know, sweat and it's, it's like real, just in front of you. And then we also provide uh, pre pre-theater talk, so you don't have to prepare. You come to the, to the theater, and then we give you a brief background. And also, after the best part is after the show, we mingle. And we have a party with the, with the singers. So we make opera as your personal experience. So our, so this is what we want to do. Our vision is to make opera as an entertainment medium of choice. Now we have a concert, musical theater, movie, but there's so many. But nobody said, oh, what are you doing this weekend? But nobody said, oh yeah, I'm gonna go see opera. Uh, how many times do you hear this, right? Not really. So, but we wanna become one of them. If they go to musical, why not go to see, see opera? So that's what we, we would like to, to offer. So we founded 2016. We have done many shows and events. And how did we actually do those things? Let me give you some example. This is the latest uh, uh, live production, Carmen Hong Kong, 2021. During the COVID time, you, you, you all know, Hong Kong had a very uh, strict uh, restriction, uh, but uh, we are lucky that we, we presented uh, Carmen Hong Kong on stage uh, at the like, very narrow window. We made a uh, common, well, okay, the first of all, it's 90 minutes, right? 90 minutes. That's, please, when you go back home, you remember Modern Musical does 90 minutes opera, okay? So, um, and the secondly, so we make a uh, common as a present story. So, as you know, common is, uh, you know, Roma Gypsy, right? And, uh, but it's, she's not in our 
opera, Carmen is a young Hong Kong woman. She was grown and brought up the, from the bottom of society. So she's working hard and then she has to, you know, do certain things to, to rise, right? So that's our Carmen Hong Kong story. So the audience in Hong Kong, they, they were laughing and really, because they, they can relate to her. It was a. Uh, it was. It was very um, like a relevant story to uh, to Hong Kong people, to the audience, and uh, we did. So we did uh, quite a. Oops, sorry. Oops. Oh, here. So we did reach out to younger people. This is the audience profile. Look, 50% of, uh, of our audience is under 40, and about 80% under 50. This is unheard of as an opera company. Well, I don't have a stat with me, but Metropolitan Opera would be probably 80% over 50, or maybe over 60. Um, it's a, that's a huge difference. And uh, the, we did a survey, and they, they really thought, oh, wow, I can do this. If this is opera, I can do this. This is, this is fun. This was interesting. 85% says become more interested in opera. So we felt very uh, good that we could reach out to people and touch people's heart. Now, we, we ex expanded our, I call it product line, from live performance to movie during the COVID. So this is a, a movie, La Boheme, that you have a flyer uh, in front of you. So we created this uh, opera movie, La Boheme, in 2021. Let's see the fly at uh, the trader. Okay, well, thank you for watching my uh, The Trader. So that's the, the movie uh, we created during the pandemic. So, you know, during the pandemic, as you know, all the theaters are closed. Um, nothing was happening. No artist had a job. They all lost a job. It was a most difficult time. And then, you know, more than musical, we had to cancel this and that. And, you know, we are also um, having a very difficult time. But, you know, me, being a banker on the trading floor, I said, oh, come on. This is an opportunity for us. <laughs> By law. Right? <laughs> Buy low, sell high. So I said, well, this is opportunity. A small and, you know, an emerging opera company like us, we don't have a much, much 
you know, heavy baggage to carry. We don't have a you know, heavy, you know, f fixed cost. We can be very flexible. This is a time we can expand. We can make international, um, you know, uh, exposure. So I talked to my um, New York-based uh, producer, says, hey, let's do something. Let's make movie. And then we can engage top quality artists. We can engage them. We could give them a job. We could we can hire a music director. We can hire a musician. Those people, they all don't have anything to do. So um, we decided to, hey, let's do it. This is the time. So we decided to uh, create a movie. But why La Boheme? You know, when I was seeing what's happening in the world, I says, oh, wow. This is just like late 19th century when tuberculosis was, you know, was everywhere and a lot of people suffering. Look, Puccini is La Boheme. Those young Bohemian artists, they were suffering from poverty and you know, pandemic, just like now. So I said, okay, I, let's create documentary opera art film to, to tell the story, what's happening by beautiful music by Puccini. And I wanted to feature Ethnic minorities, they're having particularly difficult time. And Asia hatred just started to hit hard on Asians. So I decided to cast Asian, Chinese, and two Chinese as a main cast, uh, Mimi and Rodolfo, and the Japanese as a Colini and African-American, Mexican-American, Puerto Ricans. So, you know, we casted those ethnic minority background, top quality opera singers to represent, you know, the characters in our movie. Also, this movie, we did all location shooting. So when we were shooting in 2021, January, February, and those two months, that's a, the worst time of a pandemic in New York and the rest of the world. So when we did the, the first scene, you know, those uh, young bohemians, they're talking, Rodolfo and the Marchero, two main characters, they're talking, their breath are white. Guess what? We lost electricity that day. So they were <laughs> talking with white, you know, breath. It just, it's real. So what happened in the movie, what, what was exactly happening when we had a, you know, a filming. So it was so real. So we, I want to see, when you hear about the opera, people say, oh, opera is, is you know, it's soup opera. It's just unrelatable. What's happening on the stage, you know, it's nothing to do with me. Really? Look, look at this film. This was exactly what was happening. And the way we did um, uh, uh, the film shooting of scene three, that where the couple, you know, broke up, um, we did it in Coney Island. And then we had the blizzard. <laughs> We had to cancel a shooting one day. You know how much that cost me, but not, <laughs> but it was real. And then, you know, and we did it like three in the morning. So it was cold and, and you know, Coney Island is not exactly, you know, Beaver Hills. It's very dirty and, you know, it was real. So, um, you know, we wanted to tell the story. 
It's, it's real. Hope you will find that in the movie. We also change um, the setting from Christmas Eve of original uh, script to Chinese New Year in Chinatown, Manhattan, from Paris, 1930 Paris College Latin to 2021 Chinatown in Manhattan. And then uh, we had a party scene at Nomwa, which is the uh, oldest uh, yam cha uh, dim sum tea house in, in, in Chinatown. And actually, Spider-Man 2 was filmed there too. And when we did the shooting, there was absolutely nobody. It was because we happened to, actually, I planned to, to film on the Chinese New Year. And the snow, and nobody there is dead. It's, it is, we are lucky that we, we could get filmed that day. And uh, scene three, we, we, when everybody gathered in a loft, we are very lucky that Matthew Barney, who is a, a very well-known uh, contemporary artist, said, oh, this is an interesting uh, uh, film. Please use our, our loft. So we used a loft and, uh, you know, even fly a drone to have a, you know, Manhattan night, night, uh, night lines. So we had, a, we had interesting uh, people that interesting, uh, yeah, we interested in people who wanted to help us. And let's quickly look at the, the cast. Those are the main cast. Mimi and Rodolfo are two Chinese. And then Marusa, Ma, Muzetta is Larissa Martinez. She's a Puerto Rican. And uh, she's actually a uh, duet partner of Andrea Bocelli's uh, European tour. Now she's touring with Joshua Bell, uh, who is also a super famous violinist. And Marcello is a Mexican-American. He, 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 he appeared at the Met last season. And uh, Shonard is a, a Marquer. He is also uh, singing at the Met now. And Hide, in a way, he, Japanese, he, he's a move to to, uh, he is going to move to Germany uh, this year. He got the amazing two-year contract by Brumann Theater. Anthony Ross Costanzo is also uh, appeared in, in our film as a drug dealer instead of a toy merchant. <laughs> it's a bit different, right? So we we uh, he he is. We are very lucky to have him, though it's a very, very, you know, small role that he appeared. He is a superstar, superstar countertenor. He played a main role of Akhenaten at the Metropolitan Opera uh, two seasons ago and the and one before. He is such a big star, he sold 150% of ticket at the Met. It's a Met... Uh, ticket sales record. Why 150%? Met Peter Gelb, so, oh, we can sell that ticket. So they introduced dynamic ticketing. So he's, he's a superstar. He's a, he's a friend. So I asked him, hey, Anthony, can you be in the part? He says, oh, yeah, sure, sure. T tell me when. So uh, very lucky we had him. When we did a uh, private preview uh, with for our uh, the sponsors and the supporters, eighty about ninety percent people says it's relevant to human experience. So we do all all good things, outreach and uh, uh, everything, everything. So. Uh, you know, of course, we have to, to educate young people. We have to, you know, to make it relevant to you. We, rather than telling people to come to a theater that they're not familiar, we tell people to 
we 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 said, oh, don't worry, we come to where you guys hung out. So we go to a you know more studio like theater. We go to we go movie theater, and then we go to a bar uh, to do some gigs. So we we make um, ourselves very ap- approachable. So this is uh, the QR code to go to uh, the official website of Labo M. Please come to see and experience what this film is about. And uh, share with your friends. Hey, and then tell me what you think. Did you feel this is something that you can relate to? Did you have fun? Did you like feel different about the opera? Is it, do you think it's, this can be a good example of opera, that opera can be a living art. Well, thank you very much. This is, uh, you know, I, I hope I have talked to you of my passion and uh, you will have a chance to actually experience it. Thank you. Rimiko san, yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, finally, I understand uh, what <laughs> you are aiming for. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Good. <laughs> I made a point. <laughs> yeah, I, I have seen your second uh, persona today. <laughs> uh, before going to the uh, audience, uh, I'd like to ask uh, my question okay. uh, to you, um, a couple. Uh, so, Rumiko-san, um, my first uh, question uh, is uh, what uh, distinguishes uh, modern musical from uh, operetta, uh, opera comic, and uh, musicals? I ask this uh, question uh, because I believe operetta and uh, opera comic are popular or more accessible uh, versions of opera. And uh, these versions were imported uh, to the United States and uh, adapted into musicals. Right. So please uh, let me know if my understanding is correct. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, my second question uh, is, uh, is modern musical a condensed version of opera uh, intended for busy uh, business persons? I ask this question because for me, Watching a full opera can be challenging. Uh, it's tough to buy ticket, uh, tough to spare four to five hours, and uh, tough to adhere to the dress code. <laughs> <laughs> I understand from today's presentation that we started uh, watching, uh, you started uh, watching operas uh, while at Goldman Sachs. And uh, I imagine it was also challenging for you to find time for opera at that time. Is that one of the reasons why you established uh, modern opera, uh, modern musical, as a shorter version of opera? So that's my question. Okay. Well, thank you for your question, Horisan. Um, you know, you're absolutely right. So opera was was long and then quite serious. So you know the people. You know, French started to say, oh, come on, let's have more fun. So it started to have a more operetta, opera comic, and that evolved to musical, actually to movie as well. So, um, but we, we don't, we love, we don't care like what work, what pieces uh, to, we got to do. I mean, we are not distinguish ourselves uh, from, opera or operetta, opera comic, what we are trying to do is just to tell the story, human beings, you know, story of human beings in 90 minutes. So, so uh, we've been doing a, a classical opera uh, adaptation in 90 minutes, uh, but we are actually um, planning to have new commission now uh, and uh, more, um, multi-discipline 
uh, the art form, uh, such as uh, you know uh, the work you with uh, contemporary dance, or classical dance, uh, also art tech. So, like I said, I I wanted to make opera as a living art form. So, how can we ignore art tech? Right, technology has has uh, uh, advanced so much. Uh, so, I wanted to 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 like redefine opera, re, um, reinvent opera in a way to, uh, you know, that I, how, how can I tell the story to, you know, people like yourself and the younger generation? So uh, that's more of a, my, my focus. Um, actually, I was in London together with uh, my daughter, Annette. She's right here. Um, and then we went to Abba uh, Voyage you know, that the, the hologram concert. And then I said, eh, I don't know whether we would really like it or not. But oh gosh, it was fun. Of course, it's, the music is not live. That part, I, I actually wasn't very thrilled. But as a visual and the way they did it was extremely, um, how to say, lively. So Annette and I, uh, we were, you know, in a dancing floor, dance all night. So that was, that was really fun. So if, if that's available, why not for us, right? So I'm actually working on a, on a you know, hologram uh, for the next opera, yeah. And the other question, um, sure, this uh, modern musical's condensed version is for busy business person and uh, busy young people busy young people, and uh, people who have never been to opera, who doesn't know opera that well. You know, the people could invest 90 minutes to find out what's, 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 what, what it's like, right? Because you guys go, go to see a movie, so why not go to the opera? But it said, oh, three, four hours, five hours? They said, no, thank you, right? So that's, I make it like suited to the current people's lifestyle and not losing the core aesthetic and the value of uh, opera. That's my challenge. And the last question was, oh, because I've been too busy as a, as a you know, Goldman Sachs woman and a working mother. Well, I didn't start to go, go see opera or, or start learning how to sing opera, actually, um, until uh, my daughter became uh, 10 years old. So, you know, when you know, children become 10 years old, they, have their, they, they at least say they have their own life too, right? So <laughs> they wanted to hang out with the friends and they, you know, I, I didn't need to, to pamper, uh, you know, my daughter anymore. She's, it, so she started to have her own social life too, right? So I started to have a little more time. And uh, also it was so important for me to have something uh, that I'm passionate about besides work and family. Otherwise my life is not balanced because I've been doing for you know for a long time, but I want to have my own thing, you know, other way to show to to express my passion. So an opera totally fit that uh, category. My name is Yumi Womack and I'm a friend of Rumi, Rumiko. And my question is what is your opinion about the difference between opera and musical, and what is more than musical? Okay, well, thank you. I get asked that question quite often. So uh, the difference between op uh, opera and the musicals, there are not much, right? So uh, both, both uh, drama and uh, theatrical and um, expressed by, by music. Uh, but to me, from uh, from my personal experience, um, musical is uh, amplified the voice, and uh, I'm not against it. But to me, to hear a raw voice or uh, acoustic voice is gives people and me a different experience of. Uh, different way of, how to say, 
different uh, experience. Um, when you go to, to uh, when you hear a professional opera singers, especially up close like we do, you actually feel the vibration because sound is a vibration. And they are trained to, to sing in a the big theater, thousands, thousands of people. So it's quite, they re resonate and it's, 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 a, it's a different uh, uh, feel. So to me, that's the biggest difference, yes. Um, Kathy Matsui, uh, longtime friend, former colleague of Rumiko's, and I remember Rumiko-san, you explaining more than musical to me when you're first starting your journey. And I have to say, it was, wow, this is so innovative, but how are you going to do this? <laughs> um, but uh, congratulations Thank on you. coming this far. I didn't realize you had produced so many um, operas and uh, uh, of such diversity and variety. Thank My you. questions, uh, number one is uh, maybe <laughs> my finance hat on is, how, how do you finance <laughs> what I think is not cheap productions? Uh, and number two, um, I'd love to see your film in documentary, uh, how do you say, film festivals, like, Ber I don't know, Berlin, or even there's one in Yamagata, but um, I think this would be amazing to broaden the reach Thank of your you. Film. Thank you. So, uh, finance. Gosh, that's the most challenging thing. I didn't know producer was about the fundraising, but that's what it, my main job. So uh, luckily uh, in Hong Kong, I have a circle of uh, friends who loves art and who wanted to uh, support uh, this initiative, this project. So I got uh, quite a bit of uh, financial support from those people and uh, some corporates. Uh, we actually started, the, fir the first one was a La Traviata. We are invited by Swire uh, Property to, uh, for the opening show of uh, Art Tree, uh, the, the performing art venue of uh, their uh, their commercial buildings. And uh, also, uh, Asia Society, uh, the Hong Kong, uh, gave, gave us opportunity to do some concert there. Uh, so we have uh, uh, the, the supporters uh, through the network. Um, and our last one, uh, Carmen Hong Kong, was funded by a Hong Kong government. Hong Kong government has uh, art council, uh, so uh, art and culture development council. So uh, they uh, funded our project together with some corporates and then uh, and and then uh, generous uh, individuals. So, but I generous uh, generous sponsors, uh, financial supporters, uh, of course, including myself. <laughs> so I put uh, my, my own uh, uh, contribution as well. But I'm very lucky that uh, I have a surrounding uh, people who wanted to, to uh, how to say, to, to, uh, to have the journey together. Oh, film festival. Yes, we wanted to go to film festival. Um, so if you know anyone, that who can help us, let me know. Thank you so much for your lovely talk. I learned so much. Um, my name is Marina, and I cover political affairs and defense at the Swedish Embassy in Tokyo. Um, and through my role, I actually cover social topics. So I hope you don't mind my asking uh, you some questions about um, the sort of impact that your documentary or your, your, um, your um, show has on sort of youth uh, in terms of sort of social issues and um, you cover minority issues and, and you said you keep it real. And I'm wondering what sort of impact you think this has on young people that actually draws them to, to your, your, uh, your show. You. Um, the impact, we will, um, we will see what kind of impact this could really make because it hasn't been shown to many people yet, uh, but I think I could I could really show that um, there are there are many very um, how to say in the upper world ethnic minorities are making this the you know the rising in the scene uh, especially 
uh, in the states because it is a social issue. So there are awareness in the states that we, you know, they have to be fair to give a performing opportunity to them. But I feel very, uh, uh, you know, strongly that we are one of the first. And in 2016, when we founded, uh, when I founded the Modern Musical, uh, that uh, we said, okay, we're gonna cast Asian singers to main characters. So the reason are the two things, one, we want to give them performing opportunity, and two, we want to show the audience. Age, there are so many great Asian singers. So you know, people are have a you know an idea. Opera is is more you know for from you know from Europe, and then you know uh, so they, therefore you know Asians are relatively new. Da 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 da. But uh, no 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 no, they're they're quite mature now. And then you see a lot of um, Asian singers in Europe and America. Unfortunately, less Japanese, more Korean, and then more Chinese. Uh, but I, I'm sure we're going to see more uh, Japanese as well. So I wanted to to show that you know we have so many great talent in ethnic minority in this world, uh, and hope uh, hope. I hope that can be delivered. Hi, good morning. Thank Hi. you for a lovely presentation. Thank you. Uh, my name is Risa. Um, I just graduated from Oberlin Conservatory and College uh, this summer uh, with a degree in chemistry and vocal performance. Um, and my question is this. So many opera companies, including the Met, have faced the issue of relevance of opera by moving away from the traditional canon of opera that reflects a more problematic and ethnocentric 18th and 19th century European cultural export like Madame Butterfly, Turandot, and Lachme. Um, they have commissioned and revived new works by composers and lyricists that are living in languages that are relevant, featuring plots that are relatable, um, and and that not only feature minorities, but address social issues in the art as well, showcasing their experience and not just their image. Um, and while MTM does address this by adapting old operas, old works into modern times, in what way is MTM redefining opera as a living art form by looking towards newer works in, say, Chinese or Japanese that can make Asian and other POC audiences and artists, especially composers, internationally recognized? Um, so, like I, I said a little bit, we are we are going to a uh, we're going to the stage to create new new work. Um, it took a while for us to come to this stage. Puri, well, not Puri. the The biggest reason is a is a financial risk. Because uh, new work takes takes a long time, uh, two three years easily, and uh, you don't know what kind of uh, work that you know until it's complete, right? Uh, so take that much much longer, and without knowing that actual product, you have to have a quite a bit of buffer, right, to absorb the risk if it's not a good one. Right, so it takes a so we we are not in that position, so that's part of the reason that we we um, perform uh, classical opera, but we adapt it to the current you know more relevant one. So going forward, uh, I we are you know there are so many aspects of, of a. Uh, so, social aspect that we we like to uh, to be relevant. The, we 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 did uh, relate. We did feature eth ethnicity, uh, ethnic diversity. Um, the, maybe the next one is something different, but we are still working on it. So it is a financial uh, risk. That how many you know? Of course, we want to do a lot of project, but a one piece costs quite a bit. It depends on the size, and, uh, but it's it's uh, it's about funding, because uh, there are a lot of talents who wanted to do that kind of thing with us. I received numerous uh, emails 
but it's a it's a collaborate. So I'm look constant looking for partners uh, and the collaborators. So anyone who are watching today and uh, here, if you can think of anybody, oh, you know, maybe this person at this company or this organization would be interested in working with her. Let me know. That's part of the reason I'm here. <laughs> so we can make this journey together with you guys. You know, I, one person cannot do anything. I was very lucky that I got, you know, an uh, interesting group of people in Hong Kong who wanted to do this together with us. With us. And there's some in, in the States now, it's in here in Japan. It's a, this is a, this is an ongoing journey. But thank you. We will are definitely moving, I mean, progressing or evolving. Yeah. I'm Johnny. I do... Uh... For 40 years in Tokyo, a small version of like what PS1 is in New York. We give a free space for avant-garde culture, including visual art, performing art, film, oh, fantastic. architecture, and we do residencies. Oh, wow. Um, nice to meet you. Um, I would love to talk to you about collaborating. I have some great ideas for you. Um, first of all, I would like to say that in addition to all your other titles, from Goldman Sachs to... Um, more than musical, we should also give you the title Kakehashi. Kakehashi? Yes. Arigatou I think that puts everything in a nutshell. Thank you. Uh, for you that don't know, understand the word Kakehashi, literally it means uh, suspension bridge. <laughs> but um, colloquially in Japanese, it means the connector. And so you're a great Kakehashi. Not only are you connecting and uh, keeping alive the spirit of the Menge Gun, of re reviving traditional into the contemporary, you're transcending uh, all the political problems in the world now with, between China, Japan, and the States. You're transcending racial stereotypes and social problems. So I think uh, you're a kakahashi that we, we can say that uh, there's longer than the Seto Naikai bridge. <laughs> <laughs> um, second of all, um, I would like to in terms of your future collaborations, I think it's a great idea where you're looking to collaborate with contemporary architects and maybe artists. And if you don't know it, a great example that might inspire you where to go is about 15 years ago at the Lincoln Center, um, South Africa's most famous contemporary artist is a Jew named uh, William Kentridge. Yes. Oh, gosh. I love him. Did you see his opera at Lincoln Center about 15 years ago? I was a baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, he does, in his artwork, and this opera in particular, it's all a satire about the Jewish nose. He makes I, a lot I, of jokes. I actually saw, actually, uh, met HD Live. I see. Yes. Oh, quite, uh, quite uh, innovative. Yeah. So you might look back and find some videos or documentaries about the nose opera by William Kentridge. And that would maybe give you some ideas of where to yeah. go. And um, I would love to, I have ideas. As you're talking, I was getting ideas of uh, contemporary artists and architects that I would love to connect with you and, and uh, produce something. So I hope Let's we get talk. to meet sometime. Thank yes. you very much. Very oh, inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. I, I love your work. Very inspiring. Um, I'm Nachi Das. I'm also a Wall Street, former Wall Street executive. OK, OK. Uh, we in, have a second career, don't we? <laughs> yes, we do. I lived in New York for a long time, more than 20 years. And uh, I loved the opera. I lived in Europe as well. Oh, And opera one of season the rare. was always special for me. I got into all the, the social aspects, the dressing, <laughs> mingling with the, with the opera artists uh, in all the major opera cities of the world. And uh, fortunately, I have also been connected with a lot of the musicians and watching some of the young musicians uh, develop in, into their operatic careers, which is not always an easy thing. But it's also been a very traditional, even today, it's been a very traditional and almost ritualistic environment in all the major cities, including New York. So my question to you is, uh, as you are breathing some fresh air into this form and bringing it and making it more relevant, it's all very, very impressive. What has been the reaction of the musicians 
and the writers and the producers from the traditional operatic world who have been trying in their own way to make it more relevant through the movies and Lincoln Center and so on. So what has been their reaction to you? Because you have to, again, collaborate with them, perhaps inspire some of the younger musicians. To your um, well, I, I know more American uh, opera industry and uh, they're, uh, they're quite the liberal, the, the especially younger people. Okay, here, here, here is my, my, um, uh, my impression. In, in America, the people working at, in the opera, opera field are very liberal, and they are very much uh, in line with what, we, what, what I, I talked about. Uh, the biggest challenge that they have is a, uh, the board and the trustees, because those people write a check, and those people are, uh, are you know, uh, are uh, more, uh, you know, uh, the older generation. You know, they're more mature, and uh, they are they are rather fond of, uh, you know, traditional conventional opera, because that's what they're, uh, you know, brought up with. So those people obviously, uh, you know, uh, have that as a preference, and that they write a check. But if they keep doing it, younger people don't come, right? So they, they, but this seems to be consolidating that that problem. Uh, I mean, that conflict. So now in America, a lot, of, most of the are the opera companies uh, are producing new new commission opera and uh, and then casting more ethnic minorities people and and engaging the female and then you know uh, 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 directors with color and so they're they're really trying to. Um, uh to uh get connected with that with that you know uh notion like a social uh you know notion and uh even met right that was a most conservative in a way because they they have to carry a you know a lot of uh carrying cost right so they're most conservative but uh they 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 have changed quite a bit now they last two two years they had uh, two opening up uh, performance that was composed by uh, uh, African American new commission right so there the thing is is changing so uh, I don't hear any conflict I mean I don't hear any like uh, oh gosh why why are they doing it kind of thing from uh, uh, from upper people and then uh, including a cast uh, but. Uh, when I said, well, when I uh, mentioned that my another fundamental question, which I haven't, uh, you know, sorted out yet, is is uh, like uh, Yumiko said, ask the musical or opera, what's the difference? To me, they're very similar, but but why musical is a billion dollar business and the opera is a billion dollar in debt? I don't get it, <laughs> right? So how can we? Be a kakehashi. That's my another big uh, challenge. But I didn't mention about it today because I myself is still like, you know, work, try to figure out. I mean, not figure out, but trying to to find what kind of things we could do. But when the, when I mention about this, immediate reaction is. Oh, musical is is a uh, has a fun tune, you know. People are you know going home like singing, you know, Mamma Mia, right? So, and the opera is just it's dark and heavy, and it's just you know, so it's no fun, of course, right? The opera is in in a bit of that or that, but, but really, I don't I don't get it, right? So. That's something I, I wanted to have a people to work with. This question, when I ask this question, I don't have anybody to hold my, you know, to hold my hand or high five with me. Young artists and musicians who have been helping and uh, inspiring 
Uh, many of them face the same challenges that you described, the conflict between the traditional, almost ritualistic atmosphere dominated by the, by the big wallets who want to preserve that atmosphere and what they want to do with their, their own aspirations. So perhaps we can discuss that. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Takedo from Sofia University. My question is about your outreach strategy. You, ha you showed a list of the places you have visited to show the movie, uh, but what would be the effective strategy for you to communicate with uh, traditional uh, age student, 18 to 22 years old at college or university student? What lesson do you have learned to share the passion to see opera, or to see the movie, or this kind of a living art experience? Uh, could you share with us uh, how could we include the younger generation people into this uh, field? Thank you. Um, sure. So uh, we find that uh, we find partners, collaborators uh, in Hong Kong. So uh, there are a lot of uh, nonprofit which reach out to those young people in art, and uh, not just art in 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 uh, you know in any uh, out of school activities. So we. We connected with them, so they, you know, they reach out to school and they bring uh, kids. We had dress rehearsal, uh, and then that's free, open to all uh, students, for instance. And this is quite uh, quite common in uh, in America, and I, I suppose in Europe as well. But when we do in, uh, any project, we always have one outreach um, uh, performance either a dress rehearsal, even a movie. We did, when we do a very small, uh, you know, the sponsor only uh, preview because they, they made a contribution. And we also made, uh, invited a student to see. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for amazing presentation. Uh, I'm also a Goldman alumni. I'm actually working with the architect and designer. Um, I have idea, I was talking to someone last night and she was very interesting so we can follow up okay um i'd love to know what you plan in japan i know a lot of students um, through my previous job in kobe i got to know a lot of performing art uh, students and they're just having such a difficult time finding a job here anybody who speaks english uh, managed to get a job so they're working in portland um paris and UK, some of them are opera singer, ballet dancer, but it's, if you don't have the skill set, it's nearly difficult. So I'd love to know your plan in Japan, how, uh, when you um, launch your movie on October 6th, if you have any plan to visit some of the countryside of Japan. You know, some of us in Tokyo are very privileged. We have access to this sort of stuff, but anybody outside don't have the opportunity to get to know you. So let me know if you have anything. Oh, great. Well, thank you. I, I would love it to. Um, this is a first project in Japan. So, and then I don't, you know, I've been living in Hong Kong for a while. And then so my network is rather skewed to Goldman Sachs people. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I'd like to expand my, my network. And, uh, our movie will be shown in, uh, in Tokyo, uh, Osaka, Kyoto, Kobe, Fukuoka, and most likely some other cities as well, some local cities as well. So I would love to have an opportunity to, to go talk to people. Um, I, it, it's a network that I, I have to uh, invest in. Thank you. Um, so we have some questions from our online world. And, sure. um, you know, Asia Society is all about uh, connecting and making a platform. And so this is a question from Catherine in San Francisco. Wow. And, um, Hi, Catherine. <laughs> so she says, wonderful. Can you do operas here in San Francisco? <laughs> Invite us. <laughs> and can we partner with you? And can we do new works? Can we do Dr. Atomic again? And that's so important right now. So there's, a, you know, I think you became a kakehashi instantly oh, that's, already. So wonderful. I know that you, from my past life, that you made things happen. And I think I'm so happy to see that you're making things happen so more, some more. So thank you so much, Irumi Bosan, for this. Uh, thank you. I'm uh, Chris Wells. I'm a former lawyer of 35 years in Tokyo. Uh, my question, uh, sorry to go back to the finance element, but um, 
you know, this strikes me as a, an actual new art form. Uh, you have a different story. You have a different dialogue. You have a different language. Uh, you have the same music, okay? And you've shortened the story to a uh, theatrical release motion picture length. Uh, and I assume that's in your, um, in your plays. I mean, when you go out to the theater, uh, you have the same format. And uh, the movie obviously is, uh, reaches a bigger audience. So I'm wondering, it, did you plan this as a theatrical release motion picture? Me meaning, were you able to recover your costs through ticket sales? Is that the intention? Uh, because it's, it's a different framework when you're in New York with big ticket donors. Uh, those, my, my, from what I understand in the opera world, none of those make money, okay? Um, on the other hand, Hamilton makes money. Exactly. And the Phantom of the Opera makes money for exactly. 25 years or whatever. So what I'm curious about, and I'm not, I'm not being judgmental about any of this, what I'm curious about is whether this art form can be like Puccini and, uh, you know, was back in the early 20th century, a self-sustaining art form. Because I think that's the, you need, you need the Lion King, but with the operatic music, which we all love and want to preserve. Uh, and I'm wondering if, if there, you've had any dialogues around that kind of issue. Well, that's absolutely um, our goal, my goal, to become uh, self-sustainable. Like I said, why billion dollar business? Uh, but you know, Broadway had a billion dollar business and then opera has a billion dollar debt, right? So that is uh, my ultimate goal to become self-sustainable. And uh, unfortunately, we are not in that situation. Uh, we are actually far from it. So we are very lucky that we, we, are, uh, we have uh, donors and uh, supporters. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I don't live forever, and then, you know, this has to be, be evolved. So we, I'm looking for a, a collaborator or a partner or a brain uh, to really, you know, uh, evolve this art form that I, 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 you know, I just started to, you in, know, in next, in the next, next level. So if you have any, you know, inspiration, I would love to hear. So please come to see La Boheme, I know that.